Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalah hamdan hamdan wa nashkuru syukran syukran wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina Man yahdihillahu fala mudillal wa man yudlil fala hadiyal wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasliman kasira majira Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqtan min lisani yafkahu qawli Allahumma rabbi zidana ilman wa razukan fahman subahanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim اللهم وفقنا بعلم وعمل بما تحب وترضى اللهم رزقنا إخلاص في القول والعمل أبريت الله سبحانه وتعالى that the session be a means of salvation for the sins you have committed Amen I also pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that for every seconds and minutes where we invest in for this session may this investment of ours be amongst our investment to draw ourselves closer to our make Allah سبحانه وتعالى Amen I also pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that may He grant me the ability to present and may He grant you the ability to understand whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of our Maker and whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and mention it. Alhamdulillah. Praises and thanks to be Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has given us another opportunity to tune in to this session in better understanding how a Muslim needs to not only identify his companion his friend, his body, but nonetheless, how they need to grow the love amongst each other. In succession from what we have, what I have shared with you in our last session, today we would like to explore the effect of love for the sake of Allah on the life of a Muslim. So it, there is another amazing hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet confirmed that this love between believers is one of the condition of faith that will grant entrance to paradise to the one who has, has it. So in one of the reports given by Imam Muslim uh, from Abu Hurairah, the Prophet said, nafsi biyadi, By the one in whose hand is my soul, you will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Allah adullukum, shall I not guide you to something? If you do it, you will love one another. And then they say, uh, afshu salam, you know, spread salam amongst yourselves. So from here, we are able to understand with the brilliant educational insight bestowed upon him by Allah, understood that nothing could eliminate hatred jealousy and rivalry from people's heart but true brotherhood based on love friendship and mutual advice and free of conspiracies envies and hatred so he called for the muslim to spread salam amongst you know our brothers and sisters so that it would open our hearts to love meeting one another on a good basis and prophet muhammad sallallahu frequently he repeated this teaching to his companion, Sahaba, Ridwanullahu alayhi, hoping to sow the seed of love in their hearts and nurture it until it bore fruits of that great love that Islam wants for the Muslims. With this great love, the Prophet built the first generation of Muslims which conveyed, conveyed the divine message to the world and formed the solid basis on which this religion was built so without this pure love which islam alone instilled in their hearts mm. the first muslims would not have been able to preserve in jihad and make the great sacrifices through which they built the islamic state and spread the rule of islam throughout the world and this is a very simple yet the most sophisticated and complex issue where the uniformity coming in together. Like we find in sports today when a team is coming together, they need to understand each other in order for them to build the team and move forward. And the basis of our religion itself gives us this guidance that not only prophet, prophet, 
was being inspired through a revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he states, وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحَيَّتٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا وَرُدُّهَا When you're being greeted with a greeting, re responds the greeting with a better greeting. Right? Even a person say, As-salamu alaykum, respond with a better greeting. Because the salam itself is, you're not only trying to find peace, but you're trying to find reconciliation. Reconciliation not necessarily means that you can have a nice, jovial chit-chat. However, at times, you know, salam means that you say salam and you do not want to engage in a conversation which will escalate to a dispute, which will escalate into a heated conversation and which will separate the parties away. So this is why when Allah say, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَدَ الْأَرَضِ حَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ The servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have been wrapped and covered with Allah's great knowledge. These are the individuals when they come across a people would stir their emotions, they will say, Assalamu alaikum, and they move away. Or what it means is they don't even want to say salam and they move away. What is the purpose of it? Reconciliation at times does not mean, as I said, it's conversation, but at times means to move apart away from your brother. You know that you do not have good vibe with this person and you want to reconcile. What is the method of reconciling? Basically saying, you know, at least you do not want to engage in a heated conversation, you move away. So this is where you are able to build a better society, not engaging and just blowing up uh, the entire uh, situation. With this amazing true love, the Prophet, and, and this is when, with this amazing true love, the Prophet was able to establish the most ideal society of believers ever known. Right? The way he he engaged his companion. And even when the Prophet migrated from Mecca to Medina, one of the essential aspect where he introduced in the life of the companion is partnership. He identified, you know, the companion of a muhajir with a companion of an ansar. And when he even chose, he chose the one who's able to mingle together. Right? The one who's able to mingle together. You know, having a partnership. What we have, the buddy system in school. You know, during uh, the school days when I was studying, we always have our buddy system. And people who serve NS, they also have buddy system. You know, you need to look out for your buddy. And this amazing model... Right, has been already practiced in our religion way back. And this itself established and tightened the needs, right? Tighten the need of the brotherly relationship. Whose solidarity, as he described in another hadith, Prophet said, the relationship between believers is like wall. It's like a wall. Another hadith, right? But here, the relationship between a believer is like a wall, a jidar, parts of which support other part. Like when you have the wall behind me, right? it is built out of bricks. It is all individual bricks, but they came in together, not only to support, but to shield us away from many humps. So another amazing hadith of Prophet, you know, Al-Mu'minun, in their mutual friendship. Mercy and affection are like one body. If any part of it complains, the rest of the body will also stay awake in pain. You know, like when I have a cough, it's just a simple cough, but it just irritates me so much to the extent that I'm, my entire body is unable to rest. And while some amongst us may experience that you might just have a flu, and the flu is causing disturbance to the entire parts of the entire parts of your body that you're unable to rest well, you're unable to think, you're unable to move as how you used to move. 
right? It is sending signal to every single parts of the body because all our limbs are the, the the parts of our limbs are all interconnected. Like how our body parts are interconnected, and you know when one part of our body gives a signal, the other automatically sends down the signal, and then it does not work well. When one does not work well, all does not work well. And this is when we need to build this relationship based on our own body system. So in other hadiths, the Muslims are like one person. If his eyes hurts him, then his whole body will suffer. And if his head hurts him, then his whole body will suffer. This is what makes a Muslim unique from every other people. That wherever you are, you might not know each other. But what enjoins us is our uniformity in believing in none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam following his path and practicing his path. So, you know, when Prophet say, well, you know, spread salam, you know, when you're walking down, I know many amongst us are in, in, in many amongst us are performing Umrah or are deemed to perform Umrah soon. When you're walking down Makkah, you do not know who the person is. You say, Assalamu alaikum. You say, Wa alaikum salam. And you feel delighted. Why? Because what joins you together is none other than the Shahada of La ilaha illallah or Muhammad Rasulullah. Because you pray in the same direction as he pray, you sujud in the place where they also sujud. And we all know who we are prostrating for, we all know who we are bowing for, we all know what is the actual purpose of our life. So, as such, that enjoins us together. And if some brothers are hurt in a country or they are experiencing certain hardship and difficulty, even though we are we do not know them, we, we we personally do not know them, we raise our hands to supplicate for them, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alleviate the difficulty from their life. So in the light of his guidance, the Muslim cannot but be filled with love for his brothers and friends. Thus, he becomes a good constructive element of love in this world and a victor who has gained the pleasure and love of his Lord in the hereafter. And the Muslim, he does not forsake or abandon his brother. And this is amongst a good quality of a Muslim, right? As we know, the true Muslim who understands the teaching of Islam knows that the religion that calls for love, continued contact and mutual affection also in the religion that has forbidden brothers in faith to hate or abandon one another. Islam has explained that two people truly love one another for the sake of Allah will not be separated by the first minor offense that either of them may commit. Because the bond of love for the sake of Allah is too strong to be broken by such minor matters. The Prophet said, No two people who love one another for the sake of Allah or for the sake of Islam will let the first minor offense of either of them come between them. So this is why, you know, what is your relationship being built upon? What is your interest and what is the motive of you knowing your brothers today. Many amongst us, you know, including myself, is a reminder for myself before reminding anyone for that kid. Allah says in the Quran, remind for indeed reminder would benefit our believers. We need to ask this question to ourselves. What is the question? Why am I why am I friending this brother? What is the purpose of my friendship? Why am I affiliated with him? What is the purpose? What is my motive? Is my motive is, is the basis of my friendship is based on Allah and Rasul? Or is my friendship based on other materialistic gain? So bear in mind, if it's a materialistic gain, then it is not going to last long. And it will not last long because this life itself is short. So this is when we must be mindful and we must have our intention 
of why we are together, what is the purpose. And if the purpose aligns together well together with uh, the individual, then you will see that it will be a successful companionship which will lead them not only in this world, right? it will not only give them prosperity in this world, however, it will be a means of admission for both of you in paradise. As we know that Islam does not ignore human nature, it recognizes that anger may strike in moments of weakness, but it puts a limit on the length of time that anger may prevail and forbid Muslims to dispute beyond this time without one or both of them bringing about reconciliation. The Prophet said it is not permissible for a Muslim to be estranged from his brother more than three days. Both of them turning away from one another when they meet, the better of them is the one who is first to bring the other. The true Muslim who has studied this definitive hadith will not be able to bear having a dispute with his brother and being estranged from him, no matter what the reason, rather he will hasten to bring about reconciliation because the better of the two is the one who is first to give salam. If the other returns the greeting, both of them will have a share of the reward for the reconciliation. If he does not return it, then the one who gave the greeting will be absolved of the sin of forsaking his brother while the one who refused to return the salam will have to bear the burden of that sin alone. This is made clear by the hadith in which Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated. I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying it is not permissible for a man to be estranged for a believer for more than three days. If three days have passed then he should go and give salam to him. If he returns the salam, then both of them will have a share in reward. And if he does not respond, then the one who gives salam will be absolved of the sin of estrangement. The longer the estrangement lasts, the greater is the sin and the more severe is the punishment that will befall the two who are split by the dispute. The Prophet said, whoever is estranged from his brother for a year, it is as if he has shed his blood. So the Islamic system of education is based on mutual love and affection and ongoing contact. Therefore, mutual hatred and envy should have no place in the life of a true Muslim. How could he allow such bad characteristic when he knows the teaching of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, which enjoins morals? and manners the like of which have never been known since man first walked on the face of this earth. Prophet Sallallahu said, there should be no breaking of ties, no turning away from one another, no hating one another, no envying one another, be brother, who know, ikhwan and be brothers as Allah has commanded us to be. Beware of suspicious of speaking on the basis of suspicious is the worst kind of lie. Do not seek out one another fault. Do not spy on one another. Do not compete with one another. Do not envy one another. Do not hate one another and do not turn away from one another. Also, in of Allah, be brothers. Look at how comprehensive this hadith is. The Prophet said, beware of suspicious, right? Beware of suspicious. For speaking on the basis of suspicious is the worst kind of lie, right? Literally adding salt to the pepper or literally basically adding additional word when things have not happened and you just want to add more salt to the pepper, it is adding more spice to, to just heat up the conversation. This is wrong. And do not seek one another fault. Know that every single human being will have gaps, shortcomings, and mistakes. Like myself, right, Muhammad Amin, I have gaps, shortcomings, I have mistakes. At times, I fall prey into committing sins. 
So no human is free. My Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "And this kullu bani Adam khatta wa khair khatta ur tawabun wa khair khatta ina tawabun." That each and every single uh, children of Adam will commit mistake, but the best amongst them is the one who return. So you can't just find for the fault and then literally, you know, blow it up to uh, the others. By stating that this person have done this and this, and worst thing, worst is when you spy on your brother. This is something where we must be mindful of that you're spying. You're just not only spying, trying to find the fault in order for you to to blow up. This is an inappropriate and unethical manner, which has never been guided by our believer. Prophet, rather, these are the word of our beloved Prophet by stating, "Do not spy on one another. Do not compete with one another. Why are you competing? You, you and I, we need to compete against our own weaknesses and and our own flaws. We all have our gaps. We all have we have we have all have our gaps and shortcomings, right? Rather than you are competing against your your brother." Why don't you compliment each other for the growth of our religion? Where is the mentality that if you feel that the immediately you have jealousy and hatred, then seek refuge from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Say, "A'udhu billahi sami'il alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." And if you think that you are going to commit an act of zulm to your brother, then rather move away from the entire situation. That would. Actually, minimize you wronging them. Then rather to be with them and cause more wrong, and do not envy one another. Pray for one another. You know, I'm reminding myself. At the end of the day, we all will be questioned. That when we are having jealousy, we are indirectly having jealousy. A point who a point the Creator who created us. We must be mindful and do not hate one another. Not hit one another and do not turn away from one another. Turning away at times means you know you, at least you pray for the goodness of your brother and be always brothers. You know maintaining a minimum, minimal relationship. So do not envy one another. Do not outbid one another in order to inflate prices where you have that one guy is selling. Uh, just put a cake, right for two dollars. And then, and he's having his customers, and what the other individual, the individual immediately do. Now, in order for me to snatch away their customers, I'm going to sell it for one fifty, right? And then, and he's he's you're taking away his portion. So why why do you need to do that? So do not hit one another. Do not turn away from one another. Do not enter into a transaction when others have already entered into it. O servant of Allah. Be brothers. A Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. He does not oppress him. He does not humiliate him or look down upon him. A taqwa ha huna. A taqwa ha huna. It is evil enough for a man to look down upon his Muslim brother. The whole of a Muslim's being is sacred to another Muslim. His blood, his wealth, and his honor are inviolable. The Muslim who thinks deeply about Our teaching, the teaching of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is filled with love, affection, and brotherhood, will not be able to persist in his hatred unless there is some diseases in his heart or some tweetness in his nature. Therefore, Islam issues a stern warning to those hard-hearted people who are deviating from true Islam. And denying its spirit of tolerance by insisting on remaining estranged, estranged, they are seeking an awful fate in the hereafter. Their actions may prevent them from attaining the mercy and forgiveness of Allah, and may close the door of paradise. This is when our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in another remarkable hadith: "The door of paradise opened on Monday. Enters this." Every servant who does not associate anything with Allah will be forgiven. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal. 
except for the man who bears a grudge against his brother. It will be said, wait for these two until they reconcile, wait for these two until they re reconcile, wait for these two until they reconcile. The great Sahabi Abu Darda used to say, shall I not tell you about something that is better for you than charity and fasting? And say, what is that? Yeah, Abu Darda, I say, reconcile between your brothers for hatred, diminish reward. So it does not literally erase away reward, but it diminishes reward and we want more reward. This is deep and penetrating insight on the part of the Sahabi whose intelligence and good sense the Prophet used to trust into the spirit of this religion which is based on brotherhood and love. He understood that hatred cancels out good deeds. This is something, this is a formula we must understand and destroys a reward. So reconciling the estranged Muslim with his brother is better for him than charity and fasting. Because if he were to continue bearing a grudge against his brother, this would negate any reward he might receive for those acts of worship. So as much as possible, we as Muslims, let us continuously strive to uphold ties with our brothers. Let us follow the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad as much as possible. And if we are unable to come into a reconciliation with your brothers, then at least supplicate for their betterment, for their future. If you know that if you're going to come in conflict with this person, if you always bump into this individual or you meet this individual, you're going to come into confront confrontation, you're going to have a conflict with the brother and it's going to only cause unnecessary tension, then it is best that you safeguard yourself and you safeguard him. However, you still supplicate for his betterment, for his future. You should not hate or we should not take away the rights of the person. Hopefully, what I have shared with you today is beneficial for me and beneficial for you. Whatever goodness only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever evil is from myself and the shaitan akulu wa tasma'ud. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna al-insana la fi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته